Naveen is an entrepreneur. He is the founder of several successful companies, including Moon Express, Viome, Blue Dot, TalentWise, Antelius, and Infospace. Moon Express is the only company in the world to have the permission to leave Earth, uh, leave Earth orbit, and land on the moon. Biome is focusing on disrupting healthcare with the goal of making illness optional. Does that sound about right? Well, hey, Tab, I, you know, anything you say is all good. We are all fans here. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing that, that, that really interests me is we want to talk about moonshots, and, and you got your book back there, which, by the way, I, I absolutely love your book. Um, and we're talking about moonshots, and literally, you're literally taking a moonshot. I mean, it's not figuratively for you, is it? Well, I think, you know, moonshots is symbolic in many ways. It's not even literally landing on the moon is something we did 50 years ago. So it's no longer about can we go to the moon. And I think from an entrepreneurial perspective, and especially every listener who is out there listening, going to the moon is symbolic of what individuals and a small group of people are capable of doing. Now, imagine you and I are now can go out build a company that actually can go to the moon, not the superpowers. I mean, if you look at today, the space, who are the people who are leading the space? It's not the superpowers anymore. It is the entrepreneurs like Richard or Elon or Jeff. I mean, that's exactly what's going on. And that particular theme is actually going to apply to almost every other industry as well. Healthcare is not going to be solved by Obamacare or Putin care. It's going to be solved by an entrepreneur going out and saying, you know what, enough is enough. The same way one individual like Elon says, we are going to go out and build electric cars. No one said to him, hey, they, in the last 50 years, there has not been a car company created, let alone an electric car company. And he went on to do that. And today they are about a trillion dollars. You know, the, all the automotives combined, the market cap of Tesla is higher. That means it took one person to go out and change the way people live their lives. And that's the beauty of what I think as an entrepreneur living in this decade. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about how do you build the companies that literally can go out and do amazing things that change the lives of billions of people. So, you know, before I read your book, um, I, would, I would send you an email and I'd ask you a question and you would say, did you read the book yet? <laughs> and, and, of course, then I would go back and read it and then I'd come back and, and I'd find the answer. But, but, but I I'm a, have a little bit of an advantage now because I really don't want you to say, go read the book right now. So I, I'm going to try to sneak in some of my own questions. But, you know, one of the things that you said in, in the book was that you believe it's easier or maybe easier to start a moonshot than it is to, to start a, maybe an average company. Can, can you talk about that? Absolutely. And a lot of the people who are especially the young entrepreneurs, they think, you know, it's OK for Tab or someone else to be talking about building these massive companies. They have resources, they have network, they have financial, you know, uh, financial resources to be able to go out and do these things. What about me? And it turns out it's so much easier to start an audacious moonshot company than to start something an average company. And let me tell you why. When you tell someone, I'm going to go out and build a company to make illness optional, we're going to fundamentally change the, you know, can we prevent and reverse chronic diseases? And if we can do that, it will help billions of people live a better life. And when you come up with that kind of audacious mission, here's what happens. The best and the brightest around the world want to work on the toughest problems. The best and the brightest people who have been successful, they want to become significant. They want to work on something that becomes their legacy. So what happens is then the best and the brightest come and call you. So when I started Wyo, we said, we're going to make illness optional. We got a call from the head of IBM Watson and saying, you know what, you will need a tremendous amount of artificial intelligence and you know what i'm going to build that team for you because i want to work on something that changes the way you think 
right? Changes the way people live their lives. I want to join your company. We found the technology out of Los Alamos National Lab. And the gentleman who was working in it for 10 years on a biodefense project, he said, I can bring the technology to you so you can help, you can solve this problem because I have suffered through myself where he, I, doctors told me I was going to be in a wheelchair. And here I am simply changing my diet. I'm able to actually get rid of this disease. Now, interesting thing happened as all these best and brightest were coming to us, every venture capitalist start calling on and saying, hey, wait a sec, why are all these people coming and joining you? What are you working on? And you say, I'm working on something that would change the way people live. I'm going to not only cure, prevent and cure these chronic diseases, Suddenly, all the money you could have possibly wanted it starts coming to you. And next thing you know, you're building a company that's going to be worth, you know, that's going to be not only worth a lot, but that's not what you do the company for. If you stay focused on one goal and one goal only, find a way to improve the lives of billion people, you can create a hundred billion dollar company. But if you set out to build a hundred billion dollar company, there's a very good chance you will fail at it. But you have to stay focused on making the lives better for every single person who uses your product and you will have an amazing company. So one of the things that people are going to say is, you, you know, you're Naveen. Of course, people come to you. You know, I mean, you, you have the name and um, that won't work for me. I'm an average person. Right. And, and um, not that you want to get too far into it, but sure. one, one of the things that I love about you is, is where you came from, mm -hmm. where you started. And, and in, in my opinion, you, you, most of us start off, you know, if we're born in the States, probably start off in a better spot. Where did, I mean, when people say that, when they're like, oh, well, you're Naveen, of course, right? I mean, you've obviously you've been Naveen your whole entire life, but you haven't been this Naveen, right? Well, so that, I mean, look, as I think as you were mentioning, I come from extremely humble beginnings where, you know, we didn't have a food to eat. We didn't have a place to stay. I came to the United States about 37 years ago with, uh, you know, $5 in my pocket, with, uh, you know, barely spoke the language. And God has been very kind to us. And the reason that God has been kind to us is we stayed focused on working hard and doing things that actually matter. And it's amazing things start to happen. My story is no different than, you know, every immigrant's story, whether it is you, Tab, or it may be in your grandfather or great grandfather or great great grandfather. They all came with very, very little when they came to this country. And they all made a great life for themselves and in turn for their children. But what's really interesting is there has never, never been a better time to be an entrepreneur. And the reason is it doesn't matter who you are. You actually have access to the same resources that I do or anyone else does. You can go on a social media. You can literally reach out to anyone you want. If you have a good idea and you are persistent and you really are actually put yourself out there, you put your intent out to the universe, there is no one in the world that you could not connect to. They're all the same resources that are available to every one of us. People didn't join me because I was me. People joined because their cause and a mission and a purpose was worthwhile. I mean, if you look at the story of the young people, Mark Zuckerberg was not Mark Zuckerberg when he started the company. Larry Page wasn't Larry Page when he started the company. And you can literally go on from everyone. The Travis wasn't Travis until he started Uber. And, you know, look at Airbnb and look at all these companies, which are not just $5 billion, $10 billion, $100 billion companies. These are all started by young people when they were nobody. What got them going was a complete fundamental belief that they can change the world. They did not think it was impossible because the minute you believe something is impossible, it becomes impossible for you and no one else. The day before the breakthrough, it's a crazy idea. The day after the breakthrough, it's an obvious idea. And that's really what happens is that we all say, well, he is Mark Zuckerberg. He wasn't Mark Zuckerberg 10 years ago. Like my point is every one of us, all we have to do is take the action. And I think the part of the thing that I really wonder about some of the times in the Western society is that we are taught 
about goals and outcomes and really focus on your goals. Keep your eye on the ball. And what we learned, what I learned from the Eastern philosophy was very different. You focus on actions. Take the first step. Just keep taking the action and let the outcome be what it will be. And I really think that philosophy has really served me well. It doesn't matter what happens. I never say, oh, I am really have anxiety or I'm worried or I'm stressed. I say, look, there are only two types of things that happen in my world. The things that are in my control and the things that are not in my control. If they're not in my control, I say, you know what? There's not much I can do. It is what it is, and it will be what will be. And the things that are in my control, I know I am t- doing everything that human can do. And at that point, it is what it is, and it will be what will be. And then literally, you just keep taking action day in, day out, and let the outcome be what it is. And the other thing that, uh, that I really learned, having been an entrepreneur seven times over, that life, life of an entrepreneur is like a heartbeat. That's the only way you know you're alive. You look at the heartbeat. How does the heartbeat look like? Up and down and up and down. When it's smooth, you're dead. So if you are an entrepreneur and you're living this smooth life, you're living a dead life, right? And that up and down tells you you're still alive. When you are down, all you have to do is hunker down and you know the next beat is going to be up. And when you're on top of that beat, never get too cocky because you should always remember winter is coming and winter shall come. And that's literally what happens in life. So just enjoy the journey. Enjoy the adventures, every single adventure you have in life. Expect that, you know, some days you're going to have down. Some days things are just not going to work. And those days will come. Accept them and expect them. And the life will be great. So, you know, we, before you came in, we were talking about, um, or I had mentioned how, you know, when you start a business, when, you know, when, when we started doing this refiners conference, you, yeah. you know, we have this, you know, we have this belief that, you know, you know, here's point A, here's point B, and in X amount of time, I'm going to have this, uh, I'm going to have this experience. And we, we always see that as a, that straight line in our head, right? And, and then life goes up and down, up and down, up and down. And then when you get to where you're going, you know, point B is down here, not up here, right? And, and sometimes, you know, I, I think we, you know, we stop ourselves before we really get that chance of seeing our, our, ourselves really progress to what we can be. Um, you know, I... I look at what you've done. I look at what you're doing, and, and I mean, I, I look and I'm like, well, well, here's Viome and here's Moon Express, two very different things. Hmm? How did you? I mean, how does the? Well, let me ask it this way: How does the average person, you know, you know and and technically we're all average, right? I mean, it just we're just average at a different level in life. How does somebody determine that they're going to go for a moonshot as opposed to? And nothing wrong with this, but, you know, opening up a Subway sandwich, you know. And and again, remember, it doesn't matter where you start from. Everything you start really starts like a, 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 you know, Subway sandwich shop. I mean, that's literally what happened. And that Subway sandwich shop, because you keep making your customers better, you have now two shops and then you have five shops. And next thing you know, you have a whole franchise going on, right? The point is everything starts because you have a great idea and you're focused on making people's lives better. And that's literally just a snowball, snowballs itself, right? So I think the, the interesting thing that I've really looked at uh, life is that the life is the greatest mentor you will ever have. Life never stops teaching. It is us who stop learning. So every movement of life, every interaction you have, it's the learning experience that we have and we have to stay focused on it. And one of the interesting things you mentioned was is starting companies in completely different industry. And it's really interesting that I have never started two companies in the same industry because I believe once you become expert at something or you become good at it, you become useless. What I mean by useless is you become an incrementalist. Maybe you will be 10% better than anyone else, but you'll never be 10 times better than someone else. Because to become a 10 times better, you have to challenge 
the foundation of what experts have taken it for granted. And once you are an expert, you can never challenge the foundation because that's what makes you an expert, right? And that's the reason people coming from outside the industry are going to eat your lunch. Now, notice every single company that's disrupting, rarely a disruption comes from the same people who actually were successful in the industry before that, right? It's always a new player who looks at the world very differently and is able to disrupt it. It wasn't some town car company that disrupted the Uber. It wasn't some hotel company that disrupted it, you know, became Airbnb. And you go on and on and look at the stuff. It's never, you look at Richard Branson, every single industry he does, he has no experience in that. And travel is one place and the hotels are in one place. And, you know, literally it doesn't matter. The, the reason is he stays focused on what is the customer experience? How do I make that customer experience better? And eventually that big, big business becomes successful. And I really feel those are exactly the kind of things that entrepreneurs need to stay focused on. Now, at while it, I had no idea about healthcare. I had, I mean, I have no degree in science. I don't have no degree in biology and I'm not a rocket scientist. But as a business, it really is exactly the same. It's always about uh, execution. You literally, it's about blocking and tackling. And a lot of people talk about, I have a strategy, I have a plan, and I have this vision, and I have this idea. At the end of the day, none of that really matters. What really matters is, Every single day, you go out and look at the North Star and you take a step towards that. And the one best way to know what you, you know, you have to believe you want to solve that problem. And I think what I was going to say about that, you have to be truly obsessed about solving that problem. You know, it's not like people, a lot of people in the industry talk about this passion. And what I found is passion is like Passion is for hobbies. Passion is for losers. Passion is not something I say I have, I'm passionate about collecting a space rock. Great. Have fun with that, right? When I say I'm truly obsessed about making sure people never get sick because having lost my own dad to cancer, that was not something I wanted anyone to ever have to go through losing their loved ones, whether it is depression or anxiety or obesity or diabetes. We just do not want someone to die from these chronic diseases, given that these things are actually preventable. Remember, your genes are not your destiny. Your DNA never changes when you become 400 pounds more. Your DNA doesn't change when you become depressed. What is changing is your gene expression. And that is something you can control through what you eat, what you put in your body, the places you live. Do you work out or not? Do you spend your time on weekends in the nature? All of those things changes who you become. And that is the trick is that aging and diseases are in our control. These are the choices we make. So what I say is illness is because of bad choices, not because of bad luck. So don't blame the poor luck for that. It's just you made really bad choices. Right? And when you start to change your choices, suddenly things change. And I think, so the best way to know that you're truly obsessed about something or not, and Tab, you of course know that. I mean, you literally have go through this every day. When you wake up in the morning, you jump out of the bed. And if you're not jumping out of the bed in the morning, whatever you're working on, you should quit that day and do something that will make you jump out of the bed every single morning. And find out what is it that you're willing to die for and then live for it. That's uh, that's a mouthful. I mean I mean I mean to, to th that you're going to that you're willing to live for it to die for it. Uh, so so we have a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of small business owners or business owners here, uh, people that run large businesses. Um, and they may think, oh, you know, a moonshot sounds like a good idea. I mean, it sounds really good. And I really love the idea. And here it is Friday afternoon. I'm, I'm all in, all in moonshot. Mon you know, Saturday comes, Sunday comes. And, and, and all of a sudden they're like, well, you know what? I don't really know how to turn my company into a moonshot, you know? How do you? Where do you? If somebody's like, I really want to, I, I, I want to make a difference. I want to impact. I want to, I, you know, I, I want to do something that leaves a legacy, a legacy for the world or for the earth. How do you tell? How do you get somebody to 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 take that leap or to start or to think like that? Because honestly, I, I mean, I sit back sometimes. I'm like, oh yeah, I love the idea of a moon, a moonshot, mm -hmm. and, and then 
you know, I, I get lost in thought. Does that make sense? It does. And I think they, that's, you know, so I have a framework that I use every time I start a new company, a new adventure. I have a framework that I use. And uh, the framework, it starts with asking myself three questions. First question is, why this? Why now? Why me? And those are the three questions. If you can ask yourself, you will know what you're up to. So why this is a really simple question. Whatever it is that you're trying to do, ask yourself, God forbid, I am actually successful in actually doing it. So even before you start and say, assume I'm going to be successful in getting there, would it help a billion people live a better life? If answer to that is, even if I succeed, it's not going to get there, then why would you want to spend a decade of your life doing something that even if you succeed is never going to be big? So at least start with something if you succeed is going to be massive, not massive in terms of massive uh, amount of money you make, massive in terms of the amount of uh, impact you're going to have on people's lives. Why now is really the next part. Why now means what had changed in what last one year and what do you expect to change in the next three to five years that allows you to solve this problem now than it was possible a decade ago? That means, are you really building the technologies of tomorrow or are you building the technology that actually was used a decade ago? And I'll apply, by the way, the same thing to Wyom, which is my most recent company. I'll tell you how I applied the same principle, right? And the last part is why me? And the why me is what question are you asking that is different from what everyone else was asking before you came? That means because the question you ask is the problem you solve. And let me give you two examples of that. So let me start. Uh, so the example of the why me would be when I was starting Moon Express, people said, hey, let's assume you get to the moon and we're going to go to the moon. How are we going to grow the food on the moon? generally good question, except it's a wrong question because when you ask people how to grow the food on the moon, the only solution is to find a way to grow the food. What if you change the question slightly and say, why do we eat food? Because when you ask why do we eat food, it is you need energy and you need nutrition. Can we get energy different way? Can we get energy from photosynthesis like plants do? Can we get energy from radiation like the bacteria do? My point is now you have 10 different ways of solving the problem because you asked slightly different questions. Now, coming back to applying this why this, why now, why me to why own, here's what happened. So I said, you know, we are going to find a way to prevent and reverse chronic diseases. Would it, if we succeed, would it help a billion people? Answer was 7.4 billion people, check mark. Now, why now? We said to do this, the couple of things have to happen. We have to be able to understand the uh, human biology at a completely molecular level. We have to digitize the human body. And we say, wow, the cost of sequencing the human body is right now about $1,000. And we were convinced that in the next three to four years is going to come down to $100. And we said, look, that sounds really good. It so happened, the cost came down to $10. And that's really the beauty tell that when we were 10 times optimistic, it turned out we were 10 times pessimistic. Because exponential technologies are so, they grow so fast, the human mind cannot fathom what the, what's next to come. Same thing happened when we say, look, even if you digitize the human body, how are we going to get the access to supercomputer to process all this massive amount of data? And we saw this cloud computing was getting cheap enough. So first time when we started, we were paying $40 to Amazon just to process each individual's data. And we were convinced that these costs will come down and in the next couple of years, they'll be down to $10 and everything will be good. The little that we knew that it was going to come down to $1, right? And it is literally plummeting. And we knew that AI was powerful, but it wasn't as powerful to be able to take this, you know, petabytes of data and process them. And that was the next big thing. We knew that was going to happen. And the last part was the most important part. Why me? Everyone we saw in the industry was focused on looking at DNA. And everyone was really looking at what microbes are in people's gut. And we say, wait a second, that's just a wrong question to be asking. How can DNA can have a solution to these chronic diseases? Because your DNA never changes when you have a chronic disease. What changes is the gene expression, not the genes. So what if we can measure the gene expression? Then we will know, is Tab moving towards a disease or is he moving away from a disease? Same DNA. 
you can see, is it moving towards or moving away? And instead of looking at the microbes, what we can find out what they are actually producing. Are they producing good stuff that's going to make you healthy? Are they producing bad stuff that's going to make you sick? And what if we can use the right food for each individual that actually will change their gut microbiome, change their gene expression? And that's literally what we ended up doing. So today, when you take a biome test tab, here's what happens. I hope you have taken it. If not, you should. Is We tell you exactly what's happening in your body. We tell you don't eat broccoli because broccoli, you may think is healthy, is actually harming you because it's producing too much sulfide. You should not eat a spinach. You think it's healthy because Popeye told you, but Popeye was not a scientist. So I'm telling you don't eat that because the oxalic acid is not being digested. And then we say you need 22 milligram of elderberry, 7 milligram of curcumin, 17 milligram of amylase, and we make that capsule just for you on demand that day. And that has never been done. And when we do that, our customers report to us they no longer have depression, anxiety, no longer have acne, they're losing weight, they're sleeping better. And all the issues that we thought were chronic diseases turned out to be simply the chronic inflammation. And when you get rid of the inflammation, these symptoms go away. And now that's the beauty. Now, I wasn't, I didn't know anything about DNA or RNA. I learned everything because I decided this problem was worth solving. So, you, you know, lo- looking at Viome as yeah. an example, I mean, I mean, e- either company, but but let's but let's stay on Viome. Yeah. Y- you know, I I look at this and, and and there's a key word that you you kept saying. You didn't say I did this. You said we did this and we found this and and we did this. I mean, is this is a seed that starts uh, uh, that 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 starts with inside of you and then did you go out and find a team that that you ask that question and then you built this team that 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 really is you know with this idea of making disease optional i mean that that that, talk about a moonshot that's that's it yeah and i think that as you mentioned that the team will come to you not because they you pay them the most in fact, most people who came to us, the guys who came from IBM, he was making a million dollars. He took a 90% pay cut because he wanted to work on something that was so phenomenal that he could, his grandkids would be proud of. And that's really the beauty of the thing is when we assembled the team because the problem was worth solving, we got more money from venture capitalists than we could have ever asked for. Everyone wanted to give us the money because we had the best team in the industry that was going to solve this massive moonshot. And they always wonder, it's a FOMO, that they don't want to miss out on the next big thing. God forbid we are successful, then what? They're going to look like a real idiot that you didn't fund that, right? So my point is, it's really amazing when you have these big ideas, everyone wants to be part of that success. So I really found is that always believe that there's nothing that you can't do, even when someone... uh, People around you tell you you can do that, and that's the one thing, Tab, is that's one takeaway that people, every entrepreneur, surround yourself with people who believe in you, who constantly tell you that this is, you can do it. And by the way, even if they don't know anything, their job is to be asking you a question, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Have you thought about that? It's just to encourage you to think bigger rather than saying it can't be done, right? And love yourself so much that you don't need someone else's approval to tell you that, hey, what you're doing is great and you are a great guy. It doesn't matter because once you fall in love with yourself, the world will fall in love with you. And that's really where it starts. It doesn't matter. People say, oh, this is making disease optional. You're crazy. You're not a doctor. How can you do that? You know what? Watch me. <laughs> and that's literally you know. And yeah. You know, you, you, it's funny you you say, you know, you're crazy. You know, you're not a doctor. Yeah. You don't have any background with it. And, you know, I, I was talking to my wife after we read your, we both had read your book and we had listened to your yeah. book. And, and I said, you know, that guy's crazy. That guy, that guy's crazy. The, the only thing is, is that, that he actually accomplishes it. So how crazy is he? And, and, you know, um, and, and I don't mean this um, uh, as a, um, 
you, you know, see, the, see, I, see. I, 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 I don't mean it to sound like, oh, Naveen, oh, you're so great, oh, oh, you know, but but I have to tell you, the, the thing I liked about your book most is I read it and I went, what the crap is that all about? And, and when a book forces you to really think beyond your parameters of thought, I, I think you're onto something. And I, I look at I look at your book and I think, you know, in, in 10 or 15 or 20, whatever that time frame is, people are going to look back and go, wow, I, I, I get it. I wish I would have gotten it back then. Uh, and, and one of the things is about your book is that, you know, a, a lot of it is motivational early on. I mean, it's, it's like just, you know, about, about your mind, your, your, what you're thinking and that, and you know what? Going back to something else that you said, you, you had mentioned um, uh, th- this physical side of, uh, you know, no need for, f- or do, why do we need food, right? I mean, uh, do we have to eat food or can we, can we find it some other way or can we get that some other way? Is That's a moonshot. Is anybody working on that? Because I mean, that, of course, I mean, that, look, I mean, at the end of the day, the human body, has to figure out how to live in a different places, whether we live on the moon, which is the first step, and we're going to live in Mars, and we're going to go beyond our solar system into our galaxy, and one day we're going to go beyond our galaxy into other galaxies, or even beyond our universe into another universe, right? Because the point is, there is nothing that we can't achieve. I still remember my mom would tell me when I was young, you know, Naveen, you're bright, you can do anything you want, and then she would say the sky is the limit and that's literally right there the sky is the limit without realizing that the sky is nothing but a figment of our imagination the sky just, just doesn't exist there is no physical sky we make up the sky because we see that as a boundary for us how many of these skies that we create in our life believing we can't cross that boundary because that is the limit until you get there, you realize that it wasn't even there. We just had made up that limit, right? And that is the beauty of the thing that I would say as an entrepreneur is that never look at the world as is. Look at the world what you want it to be and then go out and create it, right? So one thing I disc- ask people is if you really believe in something, Close your eyes and describe to me that world in such vivid details that you can see. Because once you can describe that world in very detailed things, you can create that world. So when people would say, Steve Jobs has this, you know, fictionary world that he lives in, he could create that world because to him, it was so real that it could always be done. So distortion of reality wasn't distorted for him. It was distorted for everyone else, right? And that is the beauty of the mindset is once you switch that mindset from mindset of scarcity to mindset of abundance, everything changes the way we look at the stuff. We no longer look at people as competitors. We say, look, if you succeed, I also succeed. We can both succeed. It's not at our expense. So especially all the entrepreneurs who are listening to this, They can all cooperate with each other and they all can be successful. It's not that, oh, if you became successful, it came out of my expenses, right? And that's the mindset of abundance is that if entrepreneurs unite, we all win. But the best part is that humanity wins, that every one of us wins. So when people say, I want to make humanity better, but that I'm competing with you because if you succeeded, then it's not my, that I failed. No. Everyone won, irrespective of whether you managed to make humanity better or I did. We all going to win because our children and grandchildren are going to live a better life. So it doesn't matter who wins; we all win. But you know that's playing at a completely different level, isn't it? You know, I, I remember I, I worked at a company. My first job, spent seven years there, and one of the things we were taught was that our competition was bad. Uh, you know. And, 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 you know, we, we would badmouth our competition. Well, one of the ironies is, is when I left, I didn't have anywhere to go <laughs> because, you know, you, you badmouth everybody. It, it's th- there comes a point in time. And, and you brought this up, um, you know, w- with your with your mom inadvertently 
putting a, a cap on what you could do. You know, yeah. she, you know, thinking, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm telling my son, you know, you could do whatever you want, but I'm going to, but she put a cap on it. And, and I think back to my own mother, you know, which absolutely loved, lost her about three years ago. And she would say, I, I'd say, I'm going to this conference. And she'd say, yeah. why are you going to that conference? Don't you know enough? Those people might tell you, you don't know what you're talking about or what is just trying to protect me. Right. Yeah. And, and I think so often, you know, we, we, you know, we hear, you know, surround yourself with good people, surround yourself with the right people. And you talk about that. Um, you know, how, I mean, how, how do you at this point, I mean, in, in your life, guard who you associate with? Because there are still people out there that are going to be like, oh, Naveen Jane, you know, he thinks he knows what he's talking about. He's got a moon company and he's got a, you know, you know, he, it's just his money. You know, you're going to have the naysayers. But, you know, honestly, and the only reason you get affected by the naysayers are the ones because you're looking for their approval. Because if you stop worrying about what they have to say, whether they tell you, Tab, you're brilliant, or they tell you, Tab, you're so naive, you don't know what you're talking about. If you say, you know, they tell you you're naive, you say, thank you very much. I hope you get to know me someday better. I, I, I hope you have a good life. I mean, I don't yeah. know what to say. I mean, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm really <laughs> maybe in a bad mood, I would say, I hope your mother loved you more. I mean, that's all I can say. I mean, really, why would you tell me? I am naive. My point is, if you love yourself, you would distribute the love to everyone else. When you hate yourself, you essentially have a hatred for everyone else out there. So when someone is angry at you and they're going out and poking at you, you should feel pity on them that they really are hurting. They literally have hatred in them because maybe their mothers didn't breastfeed them. I don't know. I mean, it's something really is underlying problem that they just don't feel love, that they have to hurt someone to feel good about themselves, right? And that type of thing, you know, you say, you know, I really feel sorry for you that you actually are hurting. And that is, you know, the things to take away that not feel defensive that, oh, my God, how can you tell me that I'm naive? Right. And answer is it doesn't bother me. And only thing, if you can show them a little bit of more love and say, you know, I love you. <laughs> what are they going to say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are they going to say? I love you more. No, I mean, what are they going <laughs> to yell at you with more love? No, you're, you're right. It's. It's just it's just really interesting when you know I so often we allow those outside influences or you know the words or whatever to to stop us and 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 derail us and 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 either because we believe what they're what they're saying or we get sidetracked into a battle right I mean and. And and we we lose this track and we lose this focus, and and, and all this energy. Um, does a guy like Naveen get caught up in this ever? I mean, I you know I, I see you on Instagram and I, and I never see you getting in a pissing match with anybody. Well, you know, honestly, it, because it just doesn't really bother me what people say because at the end of the day, if you believe in yourself. How can you have someone else affect who you are? And this is really interesting. Sometimes people say, he really made me angry. And my answer is, I'm sorry. How can someone make you angry? You make yourself angry unless you've given the remote control of your happiness to someone else. How can they switch on it? Angry, not angry, right? Happy, unhappy. Point is, if you can find happiness inside you, there is no one who can take it away from you. You are the only one who can give it away, but no one can take it from you, right? And that's the point is, how can someone else make you frustrated? How can someone else make you angry? Only you have that control. And I think the best way to look at the stuff is you can't change the world around you, but you can change the way you react to it. And that's all you do. You just don't let someone else define who you are. Walk with your head high. And you just do the things that you believe in. And at the end of the day, it is what it is. And it will be what will be. And, and you know, that, that's great advice. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I'll be honest. I mean, I'm, I'm really good to a point. And then every once in a while, every once in a while, something will happen, right? And, but but you got to guard yourself 
so you don't go down that rabbit hole and you start you know interacting with things that that don't move your cause forward or move you forward and but i'm going to say one thing and that may be the last word here just because in plastic state, when something happens we as people have this tendency to label it and that is a fundamental problem when something happens we say oh that was really bad right and what happens is oh that was really good just by labeling it it changes our mind. We feel really bad about it or we feel really good about it simply by labeling them. Now, imagine if we stop labeling things when they happen because you don't know the effect of what's happening. Is it good or bad? Maybe 10 years later. Even the thing when you thought was something so horrible and a decade later you say, that was the best thing that could have happened to me because that changed the way I think that changed the way I actually do things. And in the long run, it may be the best thing for you. So how can you label it as bad or good at that time? And I can give you this, you know, the lot of these stories that come from folklore, right? In this village, there was this guy, old man, and who had this son. And, you know, the young man, he thought he's going to take care of him in the old age. He's going to help him in the farm. And one day he was walking and Somebody stabbed, the horse stabbed on his foot. And now the foot got broken. He's limping. And everybody in the village say, oh, my God, we, you know, you are the most unfortunate, unlucky guy who has only one son who's not son, can't take care of him, he cannot go to farm and help you. Month later, there was a war and they came to the village and drafted every single young man who actually could walk properly. And he was the only son who was left. And every villager said, you are the luckiest guy in the whole world. You still have your son with you, right? My point was that even that happened, you didn't know it was good or bad. People labeled it. And that's the point. Every time something happens, that's my probably last advice. Don't label it. Just say, it happened. And believe the universe is your friend. What happened is for your best, and what happened is actually a good learning experience. And when you grow up, someday you're going to look back and say, what an amazing life I lived. So, you know, it's, I, I love the don't label it right now because we want to do that, right? And it's good. It's bad. Yeah. You know, I, I think back, and, and um, I'm going to talk about this tomorrow, so I don't want to give too much of it away, but I'll say this. The reason why refiners is around today is because f- five years ago, so I, 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 it's become fuzzy, right? I, I, every once yeah. in a while I'll say four years ago, and I'm like, that's not right. But, so call it five or six years ago. I had this, for, for me, colossal business failure, and, and it, it devastated me, and I labeled it. I labeled myself. <laughs> I, I'm bad. I'm this. I'm that. And, and the irony is, that today, that's one of the best things that's ever happened to me. I mean, it sucked so bad when I went through it. And, and I mean, you know, my wife would just, you know, she worried and worried and worried. And today I tell that story and I tell it with a smile on my face because I'm like, it was glorious. It was beautiful. Yeah. So I, yes. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. And that is just really the thing is that, in life, never label things, and it suddenly starts to be what it is. And you know, by simply worrying of labeling it to change the perspective on what you could do, it is what it is. And you say, now what should I do next? And less, the next thing you did, you started refiners. And guess what? Now it is improving the lives of millions of entrepreneurs out there because you took the first step, and that's really what matters. And, and thank you. You, you know, we've, we've we're, we're out of time. But thank you so much. This just means this means so much to me that you took the time to to spend with the community and 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 selfishly spent it and took it with me. And um, so just absolute gratitude and grateful that you took that time. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Welcome to Refiners. Refiners is an organization of business owners and business professionals that are looking to improve their business and personal performance, just like you. As a Refiners member, you will have the opportunity to build connections with like-minded individuals from your industry. Join our amazing community for free at refiners.io.